Welcome to the Swing Shift with the Hudson Valley's favorite professional swing dance instructors, Linda and Chester Freeman. The Swing Shift will keep you hep to the jive on everything about swing. Swing dance was the most popular form of dance since the big band era of the 1930s and 40s, and into the rock and roll era of the 1950s. Since the 1980s, it has enjoyed a resurgence as one of the most popular forms of social dance. Join us now in the studio. Welcome to the Swing Shift with Linda and Chester Freeman. I'm Linda. And I'm Chester, and we're here talking to Cynthia Millman, who co-wrote the book, Frankie Manning, The Ambassador of Lindy Hop. Welcome. Thank or you. Or I should say, welcome back. Nice to yes, be here. Yes, welcome back. So good to have you. Loved hearing all your stories and all your discoveries working with Frankie Manning on the book. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It's fun talking about it with people who appreciate Frankie as much as, as I do. So, um, in addition to working with Frankie on the book, you also worked with him quite extensively on archiving and presenting his film material. Yes. Yes. And so that's really what we're here today to do, to look at some of the film clips of this phenomenal dancer in action uh, so that our viewers can appreciate him as much as we do. Yeah. Well, we're so lucky that he was alive in a time when there were recording technologies and that we have these, these artifacts. Um, sometimes I think, boy, this was a much, um, well, it, it was just in many ways so, so rewarding, much more rewarding than if, say, I was researching medieval dance or <laughs> Cleopatra <laughs> or something like that. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of records of what happened, and, um, you know, I, I love looking at them. I mean, yeah. that was a lot of what drew me into wanting to know about the history as I was starting to see these films. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to know the story behind them and what, what I was seeing. And um, I was very influenced by a gentleman named Ernie Smith, who um, was um, one of the first people to start to collect jazz dance, African-American jazz dance on film. And when I started, we, we were actually going to write a book together originally on the whole history of swing. You and Ernie. Yes, Ernie okay. and I. Yes, okay. I, I did an exhibit for a dance um, event. And Ernie was amazing. He loaned me various materials he had collected. Mm -hmm. He let me walk out of his house with, like, you know, song sheet music covers from the late 1800s. Oh, I mean, wow. just let me leave with them. I mean, he barely knew me, but he was so dedicated to sharing mm -hmm. the history. And um, anyway, so he, he really inspired me and shared a lot of what he knew. And it's really because of his work, to a large extent, that these materials started circulating. He would invite people up to his apartment and show them on a film camera uh, on a film projector before there was video. I mean, mm -hmm. what, what, what's hard for, you know, it, it's so funny to yes. be in the position to say this, <laughs> but it's what, what the younger generation who's coming to swing dancing now doesn't realize. I mean, they just go on YouTube and they say right. anything exactly. they want. Exactly. When I started, video was just coming out. I didn't have a VCR for the beginning of my interest, the first several years of my interest in swing dancing. So the only way you could see this stuff was if you, I happened to be at someone's house or someone was doing a film program, as Ernie sometimes did. Um, so it was really his work that, that led me and a lot of people into this. And now, of course, it's available everywhere, which is great. And it is great, <laughs> but we, we also, um, when we first got into it, you know, it used to talk about, well, should we take a road trip down to Washington, D.C., where they have some of this archived? Right. <laughs> you know? um, and then uh, eBay had just started. When we were when we were dancing, when mm -hmm. we started dancing, and we we're like, oh, okay, we can. It's amazing what you can get on eBay, you know. And we would find all these old videotapes of, of these um, yeah. different, you know. Every time, well, a good, uh, great resource for me, and I want to give her a lot of credit, uh, was a, a Judy Pritchard's, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, SavoyStyle.com, yes. uh, where she, uh, 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 a swing dancer and a longtime companion of Frankie Manning. Um, she put together a kind of film list mm -hmm. of everything um, that had yeah. all these different clips. Mm -hmm. And I just remember printing that out and eBaying each one, <laughs> you know, just, yeah. and anything we could possibly get our hands on, you know, I would eBay swing, yeah. <laughs> and whatever came up, you know. Yeah. Um, and, yes. and so we, that's how we, we built our collection. And as you say now, um, it's just all there on YouTube, yeah. which is which is phenomenal. But, but it's about this big. 
Yeah, it is. It's small. <laughs> so you don't get to see it on, so I'm sort of on the that, big screen, right, which we didn't have such a big screen. I'm sort of envious that you could go to someone's apartment and watch it from a projector on a big screen because I'm, I'm yeah. used to just watching it. Well, I still here. remember the first time I scored my own copy of Hells of Poppin' was I put Sylvia Sykes, the wonderful swing dance teacher, out for a couple of nights in New York. And ah. she, she her sort of housewarming gift, house gift to me was a copy on a, a, a uh, copy of a copy of. Right. Um, and also, you know, in those days, we used to you would make an appointment to go to the Schomburg Center for Research mm -hmm. in Black Culture. Yes. Uh, up in Harlem, and you make an appointment mm -hmm. to go to their viewing room and watch mm -hmm. that. So anyway, it's so much easier now. But it was it there was something fun about it because it was like being a detective or getting exactly. lucky. Yeah. 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 Exactly. It's like oh, I remember. You know, he would come home eating it up because you didn't know when you would be able to watch it Guess again. The, the dance it. collection at Lincoln yeah. Center had the Harvest Moon Ball mm -hmm. yeah. clips. Uh, but um, mm -hmm. you know, there's something to be said for both. Both, both ways of both periods of access. Right? I think I remember someone talking about going down to the archives in Washington D.C., making an appointment and going in to see the Spirit Moves, and going mm -hmm. in and watching a clip and asking if they could replay it. And the answer was no. Yeah, no, you, <laughs> you had could to only see it once. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, we're um, so lucky today. We are very lucky, and we're very lucky to have you today, um, who can share some of uh, some of the clips that we so earnestly sought out mm -hmm. and found. Um, and I think the first clip that we're going to look at is from a movie called Keep Punching. Yes. So we refer to the clip, um, and I think if you go to YouTube, you can find it under Keep Punching. Yes. Right. And so can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that, okay, so Keep Punching is from 1939. Mm -hmm. And when I can't remember these things, I just, we have a list of most of the our major swing dance on film mm -hmm. um, clips in, in the back of the book, so I go there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad everything's in here because I don't remember. It's your I reference. Just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 really, it yeah. is. Um, people think authors remember everything, but they, they don't. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, um, it was an all-black cast feature film, and eventually the, the two clips of swing dancing, the Big Apple sequence and then what was called a Jitterbug Contest, were repackaged into, uh, was it a short, su yeah, a short subject called Jitter and Jitterbugs, so people might find it mm -hmm. either way. So define a short subject for our viewers. Um, a short subject was just a, a short, film that was, um, let's see, is that the one that was shown on a, yeah, no, a Sandy was um, a short dance sequence or some kind of dramatic sequence mm -hmm. done to a piece of music that was played on a, um, a, a jukebox, mm -hmm. okay? A short subject was just a short film that might have been shown perhaps before a movie in mm -hmm. a theater. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in the days when they used to show two features right, or so some newsreel, newsreel short subject and short a feature. Subject. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. yes. So and this was a sh uh, this was used as a sort of right. Course. And if people are interested in this, you can go to various sources. And mm -hmm. some of these short subjects now are repackaged in groups, mm -hmm. um, and and they are really fascinating historical mm -hmm. documents of music of of that era and dance. Mm -hmm. yes. and, um, so 1939. Yeah, so 1939. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, one of the, I, now I happen to think this is one of the best um, examples of Whitey's Lindy Hopper's performing. I think this is an exuberant and just beautifully danced um, piece. It's also the only clip that I, oh, no, there are a couple of clips of, um, from newsreels showing portions of the Big Apple being mm -hmm. done at the Savoy, I believe, but this shows the whole Big Apple, mm -hmm. and it's really precious for that reason, and it's Frankie's choreography of the Big Apple. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that I find so fascinating about it is Frankie doesn't remember making it. Now, he has a really good memory, mm -hmm. but he doesn't remember making it, and he said, I think we probably just got, Whitey came down and said, let's go make this thing, and we just sort of did it off the cuff. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there was certainly no long rehearsal period, mm -hmm. It obviously Whitey, somebody had planned on it because they were all wearing the same t-shirt. So mm -hmm. there was some forethought that went into it. Mm -hmm. But I'm sort of thinking it's perhaps because there was, you know, the exuberance of just, oh, we're just tossing this thing right. off comes mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. And I, I really love it. I think the dancing on it is fantastic. And you see some of, you know, many of the top dancers in Whitey's Lindy Hoppers in that sort of golden period. Mm -hmm. um, uh, later on, Frankie says Whitey started adding a lot of dancers. There was so much demand for so many groups that he was taking lots and lots of people, and there was a little more variety in the 
and the uh, quality of the dancing, mm -hmm. but this is this is the really And before we period. actually show this, let's talk a little bit about Whitey's Lindy Hoppers and who they were yeah. and what they were. Yeah. Uh, so our viewers can know more about that. Okay, mm -hmm. so in a nutshell, Herbert Whitey White was um, a gentleman who was on the scene at the Savoy Ballroom when Frankie started going. There he had been um, a boxer, he'd been a bouncer at the Savoy, had various types of jobs. And he somehow recognized the potential of the Lindy Hop and um, started putting groups of dancers together. So when Frankie first went to the Savoy, he was at that point just putting groups of the top dancers together just in an informal way. It wasn't a commercial thing, they weren't a group, they weren't performing. They had privileges to come into the Savoy during the day for, to practice, at, and they would be practicing to the bands practicing, so <laughs> that was the incredible thing. <laughs> right. um, they, they could come in any time at night that they wanted. They had a special section of the Savoy that was sort of informally their area, the Cat's Corner, and Frankie was asked by Whitey to join this group of dancers, which was a huge thing. And at first Frankie said no because his friends weren't invited which just shows you something about the quality of his character. But eventually, Whitey invited all his friends, and they all became part of this group that we call the Savoy Lindy Hoppers. Um, so then Whitey eventually became the business manager of a group that, w that had, there were several different roving troops. They had different names anywhere from Whitey's Lindy Hoppers to Whitey's Hopping Maniacs to the Savoy Lindy Hoppers to the Big Apple Dancers. Just in those days, um, an org a group like this was not branded mm -hmm. and managed the way it is now. Right. I mean, in those days, the the presenting theater or nightclub put what they wanted up on the billboard, and if it wasn't if it wasn't spelled exactly correctly, it wasn't. So there's different versions of the name, which I yeah. really mm -hmm. think is interesting. So Whitey was the business manager. He made the contracts. He arranged for payment. He went out and got jobs. He did everything from tell the kids to um, make sure to wash and up and shine your shoes to um, decide what, who, what partners dance together mm -hmm. to make um, comments on the choreography. Um, according to some people, he contributed some choreography. He had a special relationship with Frankie, the very fatherly son relationship. Um, there are, you know, he's a bit of a mystery to me. Um, I like reading Norma Miller's book because she presents her view of Whitey as um, more commercially minded, and 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 I that was obviously part of his genius was that he understood the Lindy Hop could have mass appeal, particularly after Frankie's um, innovations of the air step and the group ensemble dancing. Um, Frankie also presented his view, which was that also, but he believed that Whitey that it was part of Whitey's cultural pride and that, that he took great pride in this dance that came out of Harlem and was grew out of the African-American community. Mm -hmm. So I think that he was someone who had a lot of different sides, mm -hmm. um, sometimes conflicting sides. And, and to me, he's a very interesting character, mm -hmm. and I, I don't feel like I'll ever really totally understand him or know him. But anyway, so he put together these groups that, that traveled around the world. And, and you mentioned Norma Miller. Norma Miller is, uh, at this point, the, the surviving member yes. of the Whitey's Lindy Hoppers. Yes. And, um, and her book is very informative um, yes. about, and, and uh, you know, it gives you a whole wonderful view of what happened during that yes. period of time. Now, Frankie is in the keep punching um, uh, scene. Yeah. Is, is Norma in it? Um, I have to, I don't think Norma's in this one. I don't think she is. Yeah, I have to, I, you know, one of the things that we tried to do in the book was that we have footnotes that name all the dancers mm -hmm. in, in order. So mm -hmm. if someone's looking at it, they can, they can, but I, I don't think she's I, I don't remember. Thank you, I remember Ch looking Chester for is the fact checker today. <laughs> I remember <laughs> looking for her over and over yeah, and over and never I don't really think seeing she is. her. Okay. Yeah, 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 but she is in some of the other footage that will be shown. Yeah, today. yeah. Remember that there were different groups going around, yes. so Whitey, what Whitey wanted to do was take, he, he would put some of his best dancers in one group and some in another group so that the quality was high in several different groups. So she may have been. Exactly. So, for instance, um, the group that did go to uh, a film on the Marx Brothers. Yes, the movie. California group that was touring with Ethel Waters. Uh, Norma was in that, yes. but Frankie yes. wasn't. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's see the clip. Yeah, let's, let's take a look at Keep okay. Punch in 1939. <laughs> Gentlemen, 
Tonight, Baron Skinner has a little treat in store for you. The Big Apple Contest. love that clip. It's just such a great clip. And you're right, the, the energy and the enthusiasm is just, it's just so phenomenal. They're yipping and hollering. And yeah. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. And um, so the Big Apple itself, uh, if we could just talk a moment about mm. that, um, the choreography of the Big Apple, but, but then also all the uh, kind of iterations Steps, yeah. of the Big Apple, yeah. too, and the, yeah. the way that it's presented in yeah. various ways. So why don't you first talk to us about... Um, Finding, you know, Frankie, why, how he developed this choreography for the Big Apple, because it's a great story. Yeah. Well, it's a great dance. It's, it's actually, when I was in the Big Apple, Lindy Hopper said, it may have been my favorite dance. Mm. I just really loved it. Um, and part of the reason is it's a flexible dance. Plus, yeah. we did it to Flying Home, and right, I just right. love that music. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the first time I ever heard swing music as popular music, I was walking down the street one day, and all the realized I'm humming flying home. I'm not humming a popular right. music that I heard on the radio and I realized that that music was changing for yeah. me. Um, so it's, um, it, 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 it's a dance that grew out of a vernacular dance that came together in South Carolina. It's a, um, a conglomeration of lots of different jazz steps of the 20s and 30s and probably with many with roots even earlier than that. Um, it's it's just a very flexible form because you can put the steps together in any order that you mm -hmm. want and Frankie played around with that mm -hmm. and people I think one thing that's nice is generations after including myself who work with the Big Apple have a sense of we have a sense of permission to play with the form which I think is mm -hmm. great so I work with that dance um, when I work with children, and I may, and I feel fine about making it into a form that second graders can do. 
uh, in my school, second graders learn the Big Apple to go with their study of New York and Harlem. And um, Great. we have a big rent party in the library. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, they, they love doing it. And it's, mm. so it's, it's a great form. Um, so it grew out of this um, dance in, in North Carolina. And as we know, Judy Pritchett has done a lot of really in-depth research on that. And um, when Frankie came into the dance, he was out in California. Um, I think he was doing, was it everybody sing then? He was, he was, um, thank you, Chester. <laughs> he was um, um, filming out there. The dance hit New York in fall 1937. Um, is that right? Yeah, fall 1937. <laughs> and Whitey, Whitey, who was always, you know, the Lindy Hop is also a flexible dance, and they were always bringing in whatever the latest mm -hmm. steps and dances were, so they were adding, let's like, say, trucking in when mm -hmm. that became popular. And Whitey saw this was a popular dance, saw that it, it had a lot of potential, wrote Frankie a letter describing it, mm -hmm. and asked Frankie to choreograph a version of the Big Apple. So he did, um, based on the letter, and it's... Having never seen... Having never seen it, but knowing many of the steps yeah. that were in it. But he also created a lot of mm -hmm. steps to go with it. And, you know, we were lucky enough, he remembers it, he described mm -hmm. it in depth. Um, and I love that part um, of the book where... He's really talking about where his inspiration came from and how he worked with the music and it didn't work with one piece of music mm -hmm. but it did with another and, and you know the real nitty gritty of being a mm -hmm. choreographer. Um, so that's it and, and it, it often and, and the way it was done by Whitey's Lindy Hoppers it um, includes um, Lindy Hop sections. Mm -hmm. um, so so when it, the, the very sad part of the story is that they were doing every they were doing everybody singing. Um, with Judy Garland. This was a couple of years before mm -hmm. she, she did um, um, The Wizard of Oz. But she was an up-and-coming star. Mm -hmm. And she was being given a break by the director. And Whitey, who was out there with the group, insisted on his kids having a break also. Mm -hmm. And that was one of his roles, was that he stuck up for them. Mm -hmm. And the director would not allow it. He and Whitey got into a fight. Um, eventually, the, they they did film this scene, and Frankie said it was it was good, <laughs> and mm -hmm. he wasn't you know prone to bragging, but he said it was good. It, the scene was cut. They were mm -hmm. supposed to go up to Harlem. To mm -hmm. they were and and one thing that's very sad is Whitey had established this little hangout club for the kids near the Savoy, mm -hmm. and the scene was going to take place in this little oh. club. Uh. So it would have been like um, some kind of recording of this this piece yeah. of swing dance history. Yeah. So they cut it out, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but we were actually able for the book, this wonderful researcher at the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences found some pictures from oh. the uh, film shoot. Oh. And I have to say the day that those are pictures that those pictures arrived was one of the most exciting moments oh. doing the book because this was something we thought was completely lost right. to history, but at least there was this visual mm -hmm. image of it. So so that's that's the big apple. Frankie came back to New York. He introduced it to the Savoy, and it started for a period of time. It was done at the Savoy every Saturday night as a contest, but it was really a performance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then when Frankie went on tour with Whitey's Lindy Hoppers to Australia and New Zealand for a year, they were actually billed as the eight Big Apple dancers. Mm -hmm. so, so the dance was that big. I mean, it was, it was really big for a year or two. It was in Life magazine. It was reportedly done in the White House, and it's a big thing. So. Well, it was done here in the Hudson Valley because um, Chester... Uh, I, I stole it right off of the cliff and <laughs> yes. brought it to all of my dancers and we did it at a, one of our dances. Uh -huh. yes. And did you go for a fairly authentic... We did. Yes, yeah, we did. We did. Oh. It, was, it was the keep punching yeah. I did it step for step. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think you're going to get, it's going to get better than that. I, know. I mean, we can all play around with it, but that's yeah. going to be the epitome right. of it. Yeah. So it's a great dance. Yeah. 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 Very fun. Uh, and then, of course, um, the Big Apple Lindy Hoppers, which is the performance troupe that uh, uh, Chester is in and is the, associ uh, the assistant uh, manager for, assistant director. Uh, and Cynthia was in uh, the troupe. What, what were the years that you were in the oh, troupe? Oh, gosh. It was like, uh, when was it? Or until, 
You know, like late 80s, early 90s? Right, Yeah, right. I was with it for about five years. Right. Yeah. So uh, so they both were uh, part of Frankie's troupe. The yes, that was Frankie's troupe. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. And the signature dance is a version of the Big Apple. Yeah. It is not the pink, uh, the uh, keep punching version, no, it's but it's, yeah. a, it's a performance. And, the, and they look great. They performed yeah. at the book party. And I, I hadn't seen the group for a while, and I thought, I mean, they were looking spectacular. Yeah. Really yeah. great. So we have another clip. We do. Speaking of spectacular, yeah, and really yeah, great. that's the right um, <laughs> so, so what we want to show you now is um, from a film. And so w when we refer to all these clips, we refer to them mostly as the clips uh, we, by the name of the film that they were shown in. So in this case, it was a film called Hell's a Poppin. And uh, so the clip is from 1941, Hell's a Poppin. Mm -hmm. And um, so Cynthia's going to tell us a little bit about what we're looking at mm -hmm. as we look at it. But uh, hold on to your hats because it moves <laughs> really fast. <laughs> so this was um, filmed out in Hollywood in 1941. And we are watching right now William Downs and Francis Mickey Jones. This was, um, I, I call Hell's a Pop a virtual dictionary of all the air steps. Um, it is considered the greatest Lindy Hop sequence ever captured on film. And interestingly enough, and hard to believe, Frankie tells me that they actually performed it much better than this many times. Um, <laughs> that they were pretty tired by the time they finished rehearsing for this after days and many, many takes. And by the way, this is now uh, Norman Miller and Billy Ripley performing. Um, it's just hard to imagine it being any better than this, and I'm just absolutely thrilled that we have this. This has inspired many people to start swing dancing. That was Frankie checking in the background there. And now we're watching Will and May Ricker and Al Mins. Um, and one thing I'm very pleased about with the book is that Frankie describes the rehearsal period for this. They rehearse for two weeks in New York first at the Savoy. He describes many of the steps, what the inspiration was, how they worked them out. He talks about choreographing by coming out with a strong entrance, as you see, and ending up with a climactic step. This is Frankie Manning and his partner, Ann Johnson, who he described as being like a cat and that you could throw her up in the air and she would land on, on her feet, no problem. Um, it's very fun to watch this with children because <laughs> right then and there they go crazy and start laughing. Um, they work with children. And it's just, uh, it's just an incredible piece of history that we have and we're lucky to have. One thing that I thought was a little fascinating and a little sad in a way, but, but wonderful in a way, was Frankie said that after he made this film, he went back to New York um, was performing in South America for a number of months and then he went into the war. And of course in those days because they didn't have video and, um, and even television wasn't very common and he didn't have access to it for years, um, he didn't see this until in the early 1980s when Ernie Smith showed it to him. So he had no idea what it looked like. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, yeah, pretty amazing. So, um, but but this is what got the the group and the the rhythm hot shots mm -hmm. started in Sweden, and really, that that was very responsible in many ways for a lot of what happened in the revival, which we want to talk about another time. But yeah. The resurgence in the eighties. The resurgence. Yeah. Yes, and we're going to have a whole show de dedicated to that because Great. that is such a it's huge such a big, subject. Yeah. And so very very interesting. Yeah. And still mind blowing to me that it happened simultaneously yeah. in so many different pockets of the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. And a lot of it, as you said, because of those late night movies where they yeah. see these clips. Yeah. Clips and eventually like the VCR being able, yeah. people being able to capture it and watch things over and over and over. Yeah. So, so we're going to uh, move on to another clip now um, mm -hmm. from uh, Killer Diller. It's called, and this is 1948, and uh, at this time. Frankie has uh, left Whitey's Lindy Hoppers. It kind of doesn't this exist is, anymore mm -hmm. at this point, right? Right. And he's formed his own group called the Kangaroos. Yes, exactly. And he talks about how he came up with the name the Kangaroos, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the time, we're, we're talking about late 40s, early 50s, and um, Latin 
dancing was starting to get very popular. Mm -hmm. I remember Lucy, Lucy and <laughs> Ricky yeah. and Ricardo, right? Yeah. So, um, so the Kangaroos, he's yes. trying to really capitalize on that as well. And again, again, the, the it, as a popular dance form, it was always had its ear to the ground about what was going on and what it could work with. Mm -hmm. And um, and I and I, I do feel like you see a little bit of the Latin influence in the dances from Killer Diller. The it's you know very up tempo and very very um, energized rhythm. Yes. So let's take a look at the clip. Okay. And we'll be watching. This was Frankie's post war group. It was four dancers: um, Russell Williams, Willa May Walker, and Johnson and Frankie Lee. And uh, he told me that. At first he called it the four congaroos, but one time, then, then contractually they had to have four dancers and if somebody was injured or sick, that could be a problem. So he started calling it the congaroo dancers. They, they broadened their appeal by, um, they did jazz, they had a jazz routine, all, all described in detail, they had a tap routine, they did these different Lindy Hop numbers, they sang, Frankie did a little singing in the war, and in war performances um, at officers clips and in the Congaroo dancers. They told some jokes and there's some funny stories about how um, sometimes it went over and sometimes it didn't go over so well. Um, but it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty wonderful piece. And this is uh, set in the theater in I just love watching, I've watched these things, I think most swing dancers who are into the history, we've watched these over and over and over, and you know, there's just different ways to, to look at it. Um, sometimes I watch what the woman does, sometimes I watch how she comes out of an air step, sometimes I watch just the footwork, sometimes I watch just people's faces or what people are doing on, in the background. The dancers often try to add to the excitement on stage by what they did in the background, as you can see, and that happens a lot in the So there was just so many ways to look at it with a fresh eye. And then go back to just reviewing the whole thing, letting all the elements come, come at you. And we are out of time. <laughs> <laughs> we keep running out of time because Cynthia has so much to add to uh, to all the conversations, and we're so happy to have oh, you with thank us. Thank you. And we will have Cynthia again. That's a promise um, for you and for us. <laughs> I'd love so, to come back. Yes, it'll, be, yes. it'll be a lot of fun. It's great talking to you. So I'm Linda Freeman, and this is Chester Freeman, and we're the Swing Shift. Keep on dancing. <laughs>